Super Rugby Saturday games. I'm back in the other room because there's three kids in my lounge. So if you hear screaming and yelling, it's probably three children. Uh, but yeah, there's four games on the Saturday. Uh, there's no Highlanders because they are in their bye week in the first round, but the other teams get underway. Aussie Conference Affair. South African Conference Affair to finish us off, and then a couple of interconference ones in the middle. It's going to be interesting. I'm in a bit of a rush because i got the, the Blues game to get to, so I should get on with things. Uh, the first one Sunwolves Rebels. The Sunwolves squad are fancy to do virtually nothing this season because it is virtually a new team from last year. Uh, they have picked Brigvadza at, at Hooker, so he is a familiar name. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's a changed lineup. To be fair, on paper, it doesn't look all that bad. There's enough big names there to make you think it could work. But from past experience, when these teams get together, it's usually around halfway through the season, not exclusively, but generally halfway through the season that they start, uh, finally start to click. So it wouldn't be surprising if they did get a bit of a hiding here. Uh, the Rebels, you'd say they'll be targeting a bonus point win for sure. Uh, they generally start, again, in the last couple of years uh, under Dave Vessels, they start the season pretty well. It's just the finish of the season that they have trouble with. So uh, they've picked a pretty good team uh, for the Sunwolves. Like I said, Brigvadza is there. Uh, Stolberg, this tall Aussie locks there, uh, Brendan O'Connor, Nunamaki, and Jake Schatz, so they shouldn't have any problem in tackling, but one of the areas they often have problem with is their tackle success rate is pretty poor, but they've picked three Lucy's who can all, uh, all make a tackle, Rudy Page and Garth April will need to get the back line running if they've got any ball, uh, Teo is in the midfield, alongside Moria, uh, Dargaville's at fullback, so... It's it's one to watch. It's one to watch. Uh, who plays ten if um, if April goes off? Yeah, let's see how that goes. Uh, for the Rebels, Rangi is there at hooker, so that's kind of reassuring. Halep Petty, that's Ross and uh, Matt Phillip in the second row. Angus Cottrell's there. Uh, Nasirani's number eight, kind of no surprises. Lomani plays nine. I'm keen to see how he goes. Uh, Tamua kind of expectedly plays. Uh, plays 10 he played a bit of 12 last year but he's in at 10 so uh, Meeks runs the show from 12 Hodge gets outside center so he could have been wing could have been fullback could have been 10 outside center is his one uh, Corabidi Callaway on the wings with Dane Hillipidi at fullback Dane Hillipidi is very very reliable at the back uh, I don't quite feel like he hit his peak form last year so hopefully we see kind of the Dane Hillipidi of old for them this season uh, the Rebels are favoured to win it by 17 by the bookmakers, but only 4 by Rugby Forecast. So they're given, maybe it's the home advantage, uh, giving the Sunnies a bit of chance to to surprise. That game's an early, well, late afternoon game if you're here in New Zealand, probably early afternoon if you're in Australia. Um, so yeah, it should be a good watch to start off your day. Before the second game, which is the Crusaders up against the Waratahs. Apologies, I will make the new logo uh, at some point. I've been a bit slack in updating the logos. If you remember the Jaguars, when they changed their logo, it took me like halfway through the season to get it done. But I will get it done. Uh, Crusaders at home haven't been beaten there in a very long time. So they will go into this one as massive, massive favorites. But if you remember, it was the Waratahs, uh, was it last year or the year before, that gave them a bit of trouble. That the, that the Crusaders kind of had to get out of jail. They were lucky not to get a red card. So I'm not saying that's going to happen here because the Crusaders at home, you'd be mad not to back them or have to have a crystal ball, which can predict one hell of an upset. But um, yeah, we will see how things go. Uh, they've picked Makaleo at hooker. Taylor's on the bench, perhaps also doing a bit of that All Blacks management stuff and not overusing their minutes. Like Severis is on the bench as well. Uh, Will Jordan, interestingly, is on the right wing, so David Havili is at fullback, so I guess there might be a bit of switching and whatnot between uh, the season. Good Hugh starts alongside Enor in the midfield, they're going to be tough to handle. Uh, Mawinga is at 10, Drummond gets the nod at 9 ahead of Hall, but those guys usually kind of mix and mingle throughout the season. Uh, Scott Barrett is at lock, so... Um, Fetu Douglas, number eight. It's a pretty good looking Crusaders team. Uh, Blindside is Sanders and uh, Christie is on the open side. So I guess that's one area they did lose a few players in terms of 
Um, guys moving overseas. For the Tars, Robbie Abel. Uh, he is the, the hooker of choice. Really good in the Mighty Team Cup a couple of years ago, but he hasn't really... Didn't, I don't think he got many games in Super Rugby last year. Uh, Stanley Fourth and Simmons in the second row. Hooper's open side. Uh, remember, Simmons is going to be captain this year rather than Hooper, so Hooper can concentrate on his game and on the Wallabies. Uh, Gordon is at, at 9, and Harrison is at 10, so that's going to be a heck of a challenge for him. So, you know, with Foley going, the question at 10 still remains for um, for for the Tars, who, who is going to really step up. Um, Carmichael Hunt is at inside, and Fokiti is at outside. Um... That guy, Nawakanitawase, the right winger. I've seen some clips of him that you guys sent through in terms of the Waratahs preview. He does look the business, so hopefully he does a good job out on the right wing. Uh, Beal's at fullback. Maddox is on the bench. Hmm. Crusaders by 19 is what the bookies say. 13 is what Oregon forecast says. So they are picking that one to be relatively one-sided. I don't blame them. Uh, the next game, but good luck to the Waratahs. Uh, the next game, Stormers Hurricanes, so you get a, a South African team, New Zealand team for that one. 4.15 in the morning and Six Nations on at the same time. Uh, will I see this one? We will see. I do like the look of the Stormers this year. The fact that Jamie Roberts is playing at 12 is probably worth a look for most of us. I'm really keen to see how he goes in his first game of Super Rugby. Uh, but the front row... It's all Springbok, Kitsoff, Mbanambi, and Malherba. Like, the Stormers should be one of the strongest South African teams this year. They really should be. Uh, Morat and Chris Van Sale, five and, uh, sorry, four and five. Uh, Peter Steff is there at seven. Colisi is there at eight. Hershey Yankees, nine. Damien Willems at ten. It's full of Springboks. British and Irish Lion at 12. Ron Nell, uh, excitement machine player at 13. Peterson, uh, 14. Sanatla's on the other wing. So... Dylan Lades, his defensive capabilities always get a little bit tested, but he's at fullback. He's still very talented and can play as that second playmaker. Stormers aren't going to be a pushover. Let's hope they can reach their potential. Uh, Hurricanes, though, having to start on the road, but like I said in the previews, I don't think it's a bad thing to get your away trip done. So you don't really have it influencing... Uh, the middle of your season, you, you you get it done at the start. So you travel and you get it done. Uh, Armstrong, Riccatelli, and Lomax is the front row. Lomax, you know, good signing for the Hurricanes. So he's going to be one of the guys that needs to stand up. Uh, Blackwell and Scrafton. Um, it's not the best locking duo I've ever seen in the world, but I did give the Hurricanes locks a bit of grief last year, and they ended up playing pretty well. Uh, Reed Princep, Duplessis Karifi, and Gareth Evans will make a pretty good back row, but they're up against some good opposition in the Stormers, guys. Uh, Pedernada and Fletcher Smith gets the nod at 10, so how they fill the gap without Bowden Barrett is also going to be one to watch throughout the Hurricane season. Uh, Laomapi is a devastating force of nature. They'll have to find a way to contain him, so him up against Jamie Roberts is going to be fascinating. Uh, Billy Proctor, 13, Husson, 14... Ben Lamb's on the other wing at 11. Jordy Barrett's at fullback. So it's also a very good looking um, Stormers team, you would have to say. So rightly so, the bookies have got this one close. Stormers by two is what they say. Whereas Rugby Forecast goes the other way and says the Hurricanes by four. So that's the only one this week where there's a split between the bookies and the algorithm. So yeah, I do like the look of that game uh, on, on paper. Last one is the Hawares up against the Lions. Uh, these teams tend to play a fair bit, don't they? And um, it generally goes that whoever's at home tends to win the games between these two teams. Traditionally, the Lions used to send, um, in the first couple of years anyway, they would send their B team to, to Argentina, but it's the first game of the season, so you can't really afford to do that. Um... Jaguares have picked a pretty strong team and I guess fairly heavy on experience with a, a kind of touch of of, um, of inexperience there as well. Vivas Montoya and Medrano is the front row. Petty is alongside Paulos uh, in the second row. So that's kind of your mix of the experienced guy and the new guy. Uh, I'm interested, interested to see how Gorison goes at six. 
pretty sure I saw him play in that uh, the first warm-up game against Georgia, the Georgian 15, which I saw. Uh, if it's the guy I'm thinking of, he played really well. Uh, Crema, Lezana, Diaz Bonija gets the, the nod at 10. Ahead of Miotti. Miotti is on the bench though. Uh, Bonija is definitely a solid safe pick. The guy runs the show really well in his kicking game. If the opposition's not uh, got their positioning play right, he will cause them uh, big problems. Uh, Malia at 12 is an exciting player to watch as well. He had one great game at the World Cup when he got chosen. Uh, Delgi is back. Bofelli's on the left wing and that means... Uh, Carreras actually gets the call at 15. So I would have thought maybe Carreras on the wing by Philly at fullback, but it's the other way around. Uh, the Lions, uh, Gianni Duplessis at three. That's that's a interesting blast from the past. Uh, Marvin Ori is in the second row. Uh, Vincent Chituka is at seven. Manus Schoolman at the open side of six jersey uh, in South Africa. It's the way they roll. Um, he's probably, because of his size, I think a pretty underrated player, but he will definitely cause the Hawara's problems at the breakdown if they don't clean him out properly. Uh, Andre Warner and Elton Yankees 9 and 10. Skorsan is there. He came back from injury at the end of last season, right? And he looked all right, so uh, good to have him there. Tyrone Green is not at fullback. He's at 14. T.R. Swanepoel is at 15. Uh, Dan Creel, Duncan Matthews, midfield. The Lions have had so many changes. Interesting, Daimani is on, on the bench. It's a Lions squad that has, like, kind of different from a lot of the other the South African teams. They haven't really had a sudden drop in talent. They've been slowly uh, losing guys throughout the years, which perhaps, um, you know, was um, really showed up last season with their, with their finishing position. But, um, yeah... I'm keen to see how some of these guys who I'm not as familiar with go uh, as they come through. But um, yeah, the Hawaris are pretty big favorites at home. 10 points by the bookies, 6 points by rugby forecast. So the Hawari is at home, the Storm is at home, Crusaders at home. Um, if you were going to go safe bets, maybe you go all those guys at home. Who's the most likely to get the away win? It's probably the Rebels. It's definitely the Rebels, and then maybe the Hurricanes. So, um, yeah, have you made your picks in Super Brew? Do so. If you haven't done so, get onto it quick as, because uh, that'll be closing in, like, less than two hours by the time I get this video up, maybe, like, half an hour. But, um, anyway, guys, you let me know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to go. I'll try to see as many of the games as I can, but it's a pretty busy weekend with rugby. Either way, I'll be watching some highlights and whatnot, but, um... Yeah, cheers guys, talk to you again soon, see you later.